The Victorian era was a period of enormous transformation for 19th century Britain. During the reign of Queen Victoria, Britain was like a novel by Charles Dickens. Funny, strange, sad, dramatic, and terrifying in equal measure. Pour the tea and get ready for some properly Victorian facts. Queen Victoria hated spicy food, but as the Empress of India and the leader of the British Empire, she demanded that curry be kept available at all times, just in case a visiting oriental turned up. Yikes. But what Victoria thought of as curry probably wouldn't satisfy her visitors. It was basically a mix of already cooked ingredients with curry powder dumped on top. Though modern day royals are unlikely to have any tattoos, surprisingly, in the Victorian era it was common. It all started when Queen Victoria's son, the Prince of Wales, visited Jerusalem. He saw someone getting a tattoo and decided to get one of his own. He started a hugely popular trend. Some estimates say that almost 100,000 people across the United Kingdom got inked. Despite their buttoned-up exterior, gentlemen of the Victorian age loved to read hardcore erotic literature and look at lewd photographs. They could purchase these items secretly from under the counter of certain vendors, and the variety of material rivaled the number of genres you could find online these days. The Victorian age was a time of great invention and, of course, the famous Industrial Revolution. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Guillermo Marconi came up with the radio in 1895. Other notable inventions included the camera, the television, the vacuum, the train, the stamp, and, most importantly, the toilet. Thanks to Thomas Crapper, most wealthy homes had an indoor water closet. However, taking a bath involved dragging buckets of hot water up the stairs to the tub, but by the time it got there it was usually cold, because many Victorians subscribed to the belief that being cold caused illness and possibly death, they usually took sponge baths and covered up their B.O. with perfume. Across the United Kingdom, electrotherapy, or shock therapy, was used to treat multiple medical problems, including gout, muscle pain, arthritis, and liver problems. What was the scientific explanation behind this? Essentially, the hope was that applying electricity would shock the problem out of the patient. How shocking! If you've read Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist, you'll know that child labor was common in the Victorian age. One employer that had a high demand for children was the coal mine. A small child could better maneuver in tight spaces and required far less pay than adult workers. Other jobs included chimney sweeping, where children could start working as young as three and working in factories or textile mills. Finally, in 1891, the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children was formed, offering some protection to child laborers. Clean, potable water was hard to come by in Victorian society. It was generally polluted and considered more dangerous to drink than nature's other perfect liquid, beer. Whether you were sick, pregnant, or just a child, beer was generally safer to drink than water. Hey, if I was a seven-year-old relaxing after a 12-hour day at the coal mine, I'd want a beer too. For a lady to have pierced ears was nothing unusual, but in late Victorian Britain, nipple piercing became a fashion among more stylish and daring ladies. Generally, gold rings were used for the piercing, and if both nipples were pierced, the rings might be joined with a chain. Makeup was considered tacky for a society woman to wear, as it was mostly used by sex workers. One judge even proclaimed that lipstick was similar to witchcraft, in that it had the ability to seduce men. Arsenic was not regarded as a poison the same way it is today, 
Amazingly, women would use it as an anti-aging cosmetic, and men would take arsenic pills to get their engines revving. That's right, it was basically a Victorian-era Viagra. Corsets made from whalebone and sometimes even iron or steel helped women achieve a fashionably teeny-tiny waist. Sadly, these binding garments cut off circulation and caused women to have trouble breathing. Hordes of women fainted all over England. Many Victorian-era ladies would momentarily pass out because their midsections were bound so tightly. Another Victorian fad was fasting. Fasting girls could live every day without touching food or water. One popular reported case was that of Molly Fancher, who claimed to survive for 14 years, allegedly without eating anything. Many women in Victorian England suffered from hysteria. Feeling blue, hysteria. Irritable, hysteria. Anxious, hysteria. How could you cure this horrible ailment? Well, with a pelvic finger massage, which would cause hysterical paroxysm. That is to say, having a doctor use his hands to cause an orgasm. Doctors could only perform so many pelvic finger massages a day. As a result, the vibrator was the fifth home electronic invention ever created, preceding the electric vacuum cleaner and the electric iron by nearly a decade. The Victorians believed that there was life on Mars. These ideas were generally quite popular and taken seriously by the public. People would even leave money in their wills dedicated to kooky scientific causes, like making contact with extraterrestrial life. On top of believing in aliens, Victorians also subscribed to ideas of hypnotism, divination, and spiritualism. Events where attendees could be hypnotized, speak to the dead, or have their palms read were extremely popular, and hucksters would make huge amounts of money off of bored Victorians. Another common form of entertainment in Victorian England was the freak show. Fueled by interest in physical oddities and death, touring freak shows visited London and rural towns often. The American icon P.T. Barnum was known as the most successful freak show showman of his time. Paraphernalia from the shows also became popular, and freak trading cards were incredibly successful. Yet another weird hobby in the Victorian era was taxidermy, the practice of stuffing dead animals. And what would you do with your small taxidermy friends? Why, create an anthropomorphic tableau, of course. The stuffed animals were dressed in tiny human clothing and posed in dioramas recreating human activities, showing scenes of rabbit schoolboys, cigar-smoking squirrels, and kittens having a tea party. Adorable! Nose-to-tail eating isn't just a recent food trend. Charles Darwin himself had a strong interest in eating animals. As a member of a Cambridge society called the Glutton Club, Darwin chowed down on hawks, squirrels, maggots, and owls. And that's just when he was home. On expedition, Darwin ate iguanas, giant tortoises, and even a puma. It was common in the Victorian age to have photographs of loved ones taken after they died. Families in Victorian Britain would pose with the dead. These photographs were seen as a family's last chance to have a permanent likeness of their lost loved one. In the 1860s, the Thames River was full of raw fecal matter and sewage that was dumped into the water on a daily basis. Since the river was also the main source of drinking water for the city, people died by the thousands from dysentery cholera, and typhoid. Once again, this was a great excuse to drink beer instead of water. The Victorian age. It wasn't the worst of times, but it certainly wasn't the best of times either. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content.